Hello there, I'm Gary Stearman. Welcome to another Prophecy Watchers program. This one, very, very special because we have a very special gentleman to give you a message that I consider vital. But he's also got a great sense of humor and his name is Olivier Melnick. Olivier, welcome here. Well, thank you, Gary. I'm very, very happy to be here. Thank you. You've got a great sense of humor. So you say. Well, I've heard you. <laughs> and you have an incredible way of writing. Now, we talk about books, and we're talking about a book today by Olivier, and it's called End Times Anti-Semitism. And to get things rolling, I want to just float an idea out here. But wouldn't you say, don't you think it's been your experience that uh, people really don't think about anti-Semitism very much. That was a World War II thing. It's all gone. Everything is fine. Anti-Semitism is a past issue, right? Yeah, it, it is. A, a lot of people believe that after the closing of the war and the end of the, you know, the, after the Holocaust and the, and the end of the war, that uh, uh, when the motto, the Jewish motto came up, you know, never again, people actually believed it. They thought, okay, the anti-Semitism is, is gone. We c it can't happen again. But this book <clears throat> exposes things, and, and you're, you're going to say, I didn't know that. Wow, I needed to know that. And this has got a lot of need-to-know information because, uh, it, it, in my opinion, and the uh, uh, opinion of other prophecy teachers, we're going into a dramatic uh, phase uh, of life here on Earth, and uh, the Jews are target number one. I, I know because I've read my Bible. And you know for several more reasons. For right. example, your family experienced anti-Semitism. Yes, yes. We, uh, uh, my, uh, <clears throat> I'm, I was born and raised in France, and uh, so I was born in 59. Uh, my mother uh, experienced anti-Semitism. I mean, I have pictures of my mother with a yellow star, having to, uh, you know, wear the yellow star in Paris. And uh, she, uh, she lost her father in Auschwitz. She was 15 when the Gestapo came wow. to, uh, to get him, uh, and he never returned. And they never returned. And so much of that story still lives among us. Now, I love books that have sneaky little passages and you look at that and then you look at it again and say, what, that's amazing. And that's your book. And I, I recommend it. I, I would not say that if it were not true. And uh, this thing surprises me every time I open it up. I'm, I think uh, you're, gonna be, you're gonna be on my short list of people to call to endorse my next book because you're doing such a great job right now. <laughs> well, it's, I want people to know that there is such a thing right now today yeah. as end times anti-Semitism. And if you really want to know how it works, what it is, what are its details, what's the background, this is the book, End Times Anti-Semitism by Olivier, I don't say that name very often, it has, rolls off the tongue, Olivier Melnick. Now let's get down to um, telling people what you want them to hear. And, and I know you do because I've, I've read the book. In the, in the book, End Times Anti-Semitism, uh, what I try to do, I try to give the history of, of how we yes. got to the Holocaust, the Holocaust, and then what happened after the Holocaust. You know, when you talk to Jewish people, they will uh, often speak of Jewish history pre-Holocaust and post-Holocaust. The Holocaust happens to be probably the single most uh, if, event in, in the history of Jewish people, that, it's like a time marker, whatever happened before and after. And we are, uh, you know, right now, we see a lot of anti-Semitism, uh, uh, not, not the same kind of anti-Semitism that we saw during the Holocaust, but as damaging, if not more. And, 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 and I think that it is time for Christians, those who love Israel, Unfortunately, not all Christians understand and love Israel. That's for another day, maybe. But it's time for Christians to really speak up and, 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 and do something to help their Jewish friends. Uh, here's a, a, a passage I just, the, the book just opened to this passage. And it talks about uh, Edward Flannery, the, it, who wrote The Anguish of the Jews. Wonderful book. And here's what he says in a few words. No longer was the Jew a mere scapegoat or a member of an inferior race, but 
the cause of every problem, the destroyer, the poison, poisoner of Aryan blood, the empire of evil. And I looked at that when, I, when my eyes passed over it a few days ago. And I looked at that and I thought, you know, I've never seen that perspective. Uh, the depth, uh, the, uh, the strength of anti-Semitism. Uh, the malintent, I mean, it's, it's hard to describe. And that's what I like about this book because it makes me understand. You know why it's hard to describe? It, it's really not that difficult for us as believers because we know there is a spiritual com component to it. We know it comes from the devil. But in, uh, when I wrote my own definition of anti-Semitism, uh, I struggled because I looked at a lot of them, including Flannery's definition is probably one of my favorite. Uh, closest to where my heart is on the topic, uh, and I came up with this with this definition: is, is anti-Semitism is the irrational hatred of the Jewish people, mm. characterized by thoughts, words, and deeds. And uh, the word irrational is very important. But the thing is, in, in all the definition of anti-Semitism I've, I've read, including the uh, the recent one by the uh, International uh, Holocaust. Uh, yeah, uh, I-N-H-R-A, I forgot, the one that all the countries are adopting right now, they, they lack the spiritual component. They don't understand yes. that anti-Semitism is a, a, a creation of Satan to destroy the Jews because he knows exactly how the story ends and he wants to change yeah. the end. Well, d during the, the days of Hitler, for example, and then uh, uh, before Hitler came to power, uh, the things that were happening in, in, in Russia, uh, and, and you look at those things, and after you think about that, th through the uh, lens of, of the viciousness of the anti-Semitism, suddenly you say, well, I've always thought that uh, it was a groceries issue. You know, some people had groceries, and it was the Jews because they were better at business, and other people didn't, and so they went over and, and tried to wipe out the Jews and take all their groceries. It's not a groceries issue. No. And this, you, you make it so clear uh, that it's, the issue lies much, much deeper. It's, it, it is, it, you have to go back to the, uh, it is a spiritual battle. And uh, looking at, uh, looking at the, um, the reasons beyond anti-Semitism, when you understand that Satan is behind it, two things happen. The number one is, uh, you know, I, I insist in my definition on using the word irrational because only Satan can make the irrational look and sound rational. Some mm. of the things that people do and think and say against Jewish people, you would go like, how could you even process this in, in, in a clear mind? It makes no sense at all. Yeah, and well, by the way, we see that rolling around again. We see it, it, it's, it's coming back full force. It, it it's is. It's coming back full force. So there's that, and, and there is the fact that Satan knows, and, and it actually, Many Christians have never stopped to think that one through, but when, uh, when Yeshua, Jesus, says in, in Matthew, surely you will not see me again until you say, Baruch haba b'ashem Adonai, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. He's telling the Jewish people, when you call on me, I will return. So what he's saying here is that the second coming hinges around the Jewish people corporately calling on him, Zechariah 12.10, mm -hmm. calling on the one who they have pierced and mourning for him as one mourns for an only son. And Satan knows that the minute that happens, his career is over. And last time I checked, he's not really looking forward to his retirement plan. No, he's not. Now, here's something that I wanted to discuss after going through this book, and that is, <clears throat> we talk about the depth uh, of anti-Semitism, but we also talk very, very deeply about something that most people don't want to talk about, and that, that is we are headed for another breakup, I think, a world war probably. The Bible says so. And the Jews are going to be this time right in the middle of it and placed in positions of power. And I think we're seeing the buildup of that right now. And people who are not in favor of Judaism uh, are noticing. And it, it appears to me that, that the Jews must get into a, a posture of, uh, of affirmation 
of Judaism. And, and we all watch Israel and we say, what's going to happen to Israel? And we see the, uh, basically some, some very wonderful people risen to power in Israel. I mean, what, what's he going to do? What's he going to do uh, to bring Israel to the point that uh, the Bible says that it will reach? And then we go back in our minds and think, well, wait a minute, we've got a lot to go through before then. We know that uh, uh, you know, Israel is right now in a position, you know, like in the Middle East with, you know, with, with mm -hmm. the, uh, you know, the Russia and China and Iran. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's boiling up. I mean, how much longer can we go before right. something just, you know, explodes? Exactly. You know, no pun intended. Uh, so, so Israel is, is, is got the, we know that they have the capability of, of making a move and they've already made some, some small moves to stop uh, some things from happening. But we also know that Israel is going to be in a place where they're going to sign a, a, a treaty, a peace treaty with the Antichrist, not knowing that he is the Antichrist, of course. So to sign a peace, a peace treaty is when you feel like, okay, we need to do this because uh, things cannot continue going. It's too risky, too dangerous. We need to be at peace. So we know that this, you know, no matter how powerful and how uh, influential they're going to be in the Middle East, you know, in what's coming, we also know that at some point, which I believe is you know, after the rapture, I'm pre-mill, pre-trib. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, after the rapture, there's going to be the, the signing of this uh, uh, peace treaty between the uh, Antichrist and Israel. And to sign a peace treaty, there's going to be a certain, uh, the stage has to be set in a certain way. That's what I'm saying, I guess. Uh, we'll drop out right now a little and let you uh, just uh, take a peek at our magazine offer. We have a very special subscription offer for you today for your gift of $50 or more to support the worldwide outreach of Prophecy Watchers. You can subscribe to either the digital version or the print version of our magazine. And here's the best part. In addition to receiving 12 monthly issues of the magazine, this offer comes with a fantastic bonus, eight DVDs from some of the leading prophecy experts in the world today. Eight DVDs plus 12 issues of the magazine represents a $200 value but it's available today for your gift of just $50 or more to support the work of Prophecy Watchers. This offer is available anywhere in the USA and will ship both the magazine and the DVDs absolutely free. Don't wait or hesitate. Call the toll-free number on your screen or visit our online bookstore at prophecywatchers.tv to take advantage of this limited time offer. Looking at the future through the lens of Bible prophecy is the entire focus of this ministry. We're motivated like never before by our desire to tell the world that Jesus is the only answer for these troubling times. And we do believe that he's coming back very soon, just as he promised. Partner with us today. Help us take God's message of salvation through Jesus Christ to the whole world. And I hope you'll take advantage of that offer because uh, it's very timely. It's, it has a lot of biblical prophecy about Israel in the latter days. Olivier Melnick is his name. I'm saying it several times so that I can get used to Olivier, which I, I don't say that very often, but I keep thinking, I wish somebody had named me Olivier. What a, what a name. And you know, when I grew up, I did not like that name at all. <laughs> I'm sure. Typical. But I, right here on page 133 of your book <clears throat> is something I really wanted to get to eschatological anti-Semitism. Now that's a mouthful. But you say here, it's an even greater danger. Eschatological anti-Semitism. What is that? Well, actually, this was the original title of the book, Eschatological Anti-Semitism. Ah. And when, right before I published the book, I thought, I'm gonna have to explain to a lot of people what that means. There, you, here's your opportunity. So, so I, I, so I said, <laughs> call it end times, which is basically eschatology is the uh, study of end times. Yeah. And what I mean by that, eschatological anti-Semitism or end times anti-Semitism, which is you know the same thing, is that uh, most people, 20 years ago, maybe yeah, about 20 years ago, started to talk about the new anti-Semitism. The new anti-Semitism being where basically the um, 
uh, the victims became the perpetrators and the perpetrators became the victim. You know, the, the, the Jews are now the new Nazis of the Middle East and the Palestinians are the victims. And you build on that and you get this, this narrative that builds, it's be, been building since Arafat, so since the, the 60s really. Uh, but, but what happened is that people continue to this day to speak of, uh, of the new anti-Semitism. And in a sense it is, since, since after the Holocaust it is a new uh, breed of anti-Semitism. But what I, my take on this is that there's another level, which is why I called it end times anti-Semitism, and I think I, I, I place it at 2012. And then 2015 you had another one, 2017, 2018, 2019, you have Jewish people being killed again simply for being Jews. The worst recent one was in 2017, Sarah Halimi. She was a Jewish woman who got a, 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 a Muslim, young Muslim neighbor, got into her house, uh, quoted some verses from the Quran, insulted her, and then threw her out of the second floor window of her apartment to her death because she was Jewish. This is not the end of the story. The end of the story is 2021, four years later, when the highest court in France, La Cour de Cassation, which is like the Supreme Court of France, mm. decided that because the man was smoking pot when he did it, he was not responsible for his actions, wow. so they did not even trial him. He walked away free. No trial for killing mm. this person, now saying that's, she, she's a Jew, she has to die. That sends a signal to the Jews. Well, let me say one more thing. In France, if you throw your dog out the window, you get a year in prison. Your dog, a year in prison. Whoa. Throw a Jew, you walk free. That's the, that's, that's the message they're sending right and now. So, and so, and by the way, well expressed in, in Olivier's book, which is called End Times, Anti-Semitism, and is very revealing. Uh, if you're like me, and there's a lot that I had not studied about anti-Semitism in our own day, and political anti-Semitism that's going on in the Middle East, uh, it, this thing is building. It, once again, we've, we find anti-Semitism building. And, and one thing I want to add to, 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 to the conversation right now is, uh, as it was mentioned this uh, earlier off the air, is that I, I come from Europe, so of course I have a, 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 a fair understanding of, of what's happening with anti-Semitism in Eastern and Western Europe. Uh, I've noticed in the last 22 years that I've done work on this that a lot of what happens in Europe usually is a kind of a, a, a barometer of, of, of what will happen in the States two to five years after. So you watch what's happening in Europe and you go like, okay, this is coming. And we've been fighting a lot of, of, of uh, radical Islamic anti-Semitism in France, which is the highest uh, Muslim uh, population of all of Europe is in France. It's 11% of France is Muslim now, and it's going up. Uh, so we've been watching that, and uh, it's, 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 it's coming to America. And uh, it, it doesn't matter political, cultural, religious, racial. Anti-Semitism is the same thing as the desire to get rid of the Jews because they're Jews. No other reason. You know, <clears throat> it occurred to me, and I, I so much wish that we had more time, uh, but it occurred to me reading this, every five minutes there would be a fact or a historical note or a, an author's opinion uh, based upon facts, and, and I, I would say, wow, I did not know that. I simply did not know that. And if you want to read a book that has a lot of I didn't know that's in it, this is the book. And furthermore, this book will direct your prayer for Israel. And that's what I finally wanted to get to. You read this and you can pray to God for the Jews in an educated manner. And I think that's very important. That is very important. And, uh, uh, you know, I've, I've written uh, quite a bit on praying for the Jewish people. I'm in the process of actually doing some work on that right now as we speak. And uh, I talk to a lot of Christians, and this, uh, this is not meant to be uh, judgmental. Uh, I talk to a lot of Christians and they say, oh, I pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Okay, okay good. That comes from the Psalms. You yeah. know, uh, that's wonderful. I think it's Psalm 120 verse 6 or 122 verse 6, uh, either one. Uh, 
um, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, may they prosper, who, you know, the, who do that. Uh, it's a wonderful prayer, but it has to be at the very, very least the foundation of our prayer. We need to pray for the safety uh, uh, of, the, of Israel and the Jewish people, but more than anything else, Gary, we need to pray for the salvation of Israel. Because I don't care how safe they are right now, I don't care how, uh, how peaceful it is uh, in the Middle East, it's not going to be a real peace. The real peace in the Middle East will not come until Messiah returns. We know that. In the meantime, we need to pray for the salvation of Israel and in, in our audience, you know, you, you need to be bold enough to pray for your Jewish friends and then ask the Lord to show you how you're going to approach them with the gospel in a, a way to contextualize the gospel without compromising. Because my friends, Jewish people need Yeshua, Jesus, wow. the same Jesus that we all need also for the Jewish people. So we need to pray for, for the Amen. salvation of the Jews. And, and an evangelist is somebody bringing the good news. We all know that. But precisely what is the good news? Have you studied? Do you know how and from what position you should pray so that uh, the ears upon which your evangelism falls will receive it? And this book, believe me, will help you to formulate uh, those ideas. I'm going to have to get a copy. You need to, re <laughs> <laughs> you need to read this. I I'm telling you honestly. You're so kind. That this is the effect this book had on me. I'm telling it was the number one effect. You're very kind. This is, this is why I wrote the book. It was not an easy work. Uh, and and uh, I'm, I, I just want people to, I just want to open people's eyes so they see the Jewish people need Christians who love Israel now more than ever. Well, Olivier, <coughs> let's stop and do some business here. Uh, if you want to get a copy of End Times Anti-Semitism, uh, we have, as usual, and uh, this uh, I'm enthusiastic about today, I really am, uh, how you can get Olivier's book. We've all heard the biblical expression referencing the Jewish people. I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. It's quoted quite often by Christians who support Israel. We would be counted among those ministries who support Israel, understanding that they are God's timepiece for the end times. The verse in Genesis 12:3 continues when it says, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. God has a special place in his heart for the Jewish people in spite of the rejection of his son, Jesus. Scripture tells us that Zion is God's favorite place on earth. And let's not forget that the Jewish people collected and preserved God's word for us over many generations. In the ancient past, the Jews were scattered to the four winds by the Romans, where they became the most persecuted people in world history. What was behind the Holocaust, and why is anti-Semitism on the rise again all over the world? Olivier Melnick will fill in the gaps for you. Olivier's book, Anti-Semitism, A New Chapter in the Longest Hatred, is available through our ministry for your gift of $25 or more with free shipping in the USA. Just call the toll-free number you see on the screen or visit our online bookstore at prophecywatchers.com. We've also created a special package that will give you a new appreciation for the Jewish people. The coming Holocaust package includes Olivier's new book on anti-Semitism, his book on reaching Jews for Jesus, The Time Is Now, and his new 365-page devotional written from a Messianic Jewish perspective. When you order these three books, we'll send you a fourth bonus book for free from noted archaeologist Dr. Randall Price, What Should We Think About Israel? All four books are yours for a gift of $60 or more, with shipping included anywhere in the USA. Prophecy Watchers has a heart for Israel, but surprisingly, not all Christians agree. The promises God made to Abraham in Genesis 12 are still in effect today. The church has not replaced Israel. So, as Olivier said, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, but more importantly, pray for the salvation of the Jewish people. 
I know God will bless you for your support of Israel and your faithful support of this End Times ministry. Thanks for watching today. Well, I hope you'll take advantage of that offer, and I hope that I've been emphatic enough. But I, I tell you, not all books have this effect on me. I'm, I'm just telling you right out in front of everybody. <laughs> and and uh, the thing I've discovered <clears throat> in my life is that very often I've prayed the wrong way. I want you to talk to someone out there <clears throat> who likes this idea. Yes, I should pray for Israel. I should pray for the Jews. I, I want you to talk to uh, that person for a couple of minutes. I, I recommend you read the book because this is going to teach you a lot of things about the Jewish people, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, the Jewish people are, uh, for the most part, ignored when it comes to the gospel. You know, the, uh, somebody once said years ago that when it comes to the Jewish people, the Great Commission has become the Great Omission. We don't really spend time uh, sharing with the Jewish people. Some people believe that because they're descendants of Abraham, they don't have to be bothered with the gospel. They're, 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 they're in. Well, read John 3, and Nicodemus was not in by being Jewish. He had to be born again. Jewish people need the gospel. They need uh, salvation that comes only through the death and resurrection of Yeshua the Messiah, the Jewish Messiah in his humanity. So uh, I want to encourage you to... Uh, uh, to uh, be bold with your Jewish family members, Jewish friends, Jewish co-workers, and let them know that uh, they, need, they need Jesus. Uh, nobody said the gospel, was an, uh, the gospel is an easy message, but nobody said it would be received in an easy way by everybody. It takes boldness, it takes courage, but it also takes the Holy Spirit, and we all have the Holy Spirit leading us to do yes, that. Do. So uh, thank God for that, because you know, uh, when people reject the gospel, they don't reject us. It feels like it, but they reject God. You know, <clears throat> uh, Olivier and I were talking about something a while ago before we came on, and that's about the Jewish sense of humor. Uh, but then we, we were talking, so that's because of all, everything the Jews have, have done has called for a sense of humor. You've got to do something to get out of this trouble. So much persecution, we have to come up with, a, you know, with an outlet. So the outlet is, if they're going to persecute us that much, we'll laugh about it. I mean, this is not exactly that funny but basically oh. we have you know we come up with something to uh, to make life a little more palatable because our, our history is 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 riddled with acts of anti-semitism all the way through and i pray that that you will find that motivator that that lights up a little spark in your heads and, and reminds you every every so often uh, i should pray for the peace of jerusalem i should pray uh, that the gospel comes to individuals in Jerusalem today. And by the way, at the end of my book, at the end of every single one of my books, there is a gospel presentation from the Jewish scriptures, from the Old Testament, the Bible, which is a Jewish Bible. So if a person is interested, they could sit down with a Jewish friend and say, I want to tell you the story of salvation. And they use only the Old Testament because Jewish people do not believe the New Testament to be inspired. So you can do a gospel presentation from the Old Testament in the end of my book. Olivier, I wish we had another hour to do this because we've barely scratched the surface, but I think you get the idea. I'm Gary Stearman. Thanks for joining us, and keep watching, everybody. We are...